Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is busy. And this is a first impressions of a ZT0562. I've always wanted to check one of these out. And I have this one in for sharpening. So I'm going to show it a little bit. I'm going to sharpen it. And then I will finish the video. But yeah, I am definitely impressed. I've always wanted one of these so bad. They're about $280. This is the all tie version. This is the exact one I want. Like I wouldn't even want it if it had the carbon fiber or anything. I would want this exact one and I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, I wanna show the edge really quick. I'm gonna go sharpen it and then I will come back with the rest of my opinion. It does need, you can see where it looks like that's the old factory edge and then you know it's had some either some mic some um ceramic uh like somebody try you know hit it on a ceramic rod or possibly some you know some stropping and stuff like that which you're supposed to do with your knife so every bit of this edge makes sense to me um but it does need a sharpening it is ready and we are going to tune it up and make it feel better Possibly lay the edge back a tiny bit, give it a little bit better cutting performance because this is a hinder, um, uh, hinder design. So you know it's going to be a little thick behind the edge. We'll measure the thickness and everything when I come back. Very nice though, man. I'm loving this thing. Loving it, loving it, loving it. I never realized it had that type of hardware though like that. Huh, very cool. Man, all right, I'm gonna go sharpen this thing and I'll be back. All right guys, so it's all sharpened up. We're gonna talk about sharpening it, its edge, and then uh, I'll talk a little bit about what I like and dislike about the knife. Remember, I didn't use it. I only had it in for sharpening. It did sharpen up very nicely. It is a mirror edge, but it does have a little bit of grip pattern in there still. You can see it's very much a mirror edge, and it looks really good, a lot better than it was from the factory. I did lay the edge back a tiny bit. The owner told me to, you know, basically just you know, do what I, I want on it or put, you know, a good edge on it and basically let the, the knife do the talking, which is really good because, you know, certain thicknesses and steels react differently depending on the choil, the thickness behind the edge, the way it's heat treated, the JRC, all those little details determine what a good edge would be on the knife. So I put what I thought was probably best on it. Like I said, I laid it back a little bit. Now sharpening it, there was a little spot right here that was recurved a little bit, and it was difficult to hit, um, especially um, I sharpened it on Veneve, the CBN Diamond Infused Stones, and they're very flat. Now hitting here and from here to here was perfectly fine, but from here to here, it just was not hitting, so I did have to remove extra steel to straighten that all up, and you can see it's nice and straight now. It's very straight now, and it came out good. Now, um, the way it felt on the stone, it felt good on the stone. It didn't feel bad. I wouldn't say it's the best um, 20 CV I've ever sharpened because 20 CV, man, when it's done really good, the way it sharpens is just insane. It gets so fine. It's so acute. The edge gets so sharp. Now, this also wasn't the worst I've seen. I've seen way worse, so it was just okay. It wasn't great, it wasn't bad, it was good. Sharpened up good, felt good on the stone. Um, burr removal was good, um, didn't have a problem with that. Now let's take a close look at the edge really quick under a lens and see how it looks. Now you should be able to see a pretty decent grip pattern even though it is you know, more of a mirrored edge.
you can see the grip pattern in there and you can see this thing's a user it's got some scratches which I like to see so the edge came out really good um, I laid it back probably a little under 20 degrees it's probably around 19 degrees 18 19 degrees I you know like I said I just let the basically the, the knife speak to me I didn't uh, you know I wanted to to increase the cutting performance a little bit more than what the factory edge brought now I have been working and playing around with different edges on different knives and different finishes and stuff like that um, and I've been doing it for a while now like where I'll mirror polish an edge completely and then I'll drop it down to like 600 grit and put a 600 grit uh, across the edge just to see how it cuts and I found that it'll have a lot of bite so it'll bite in the materials really good but on a microscopic level it's still polished in between the the grip pattern so then it tends to slide through certain materials you know really nice kind of like a polished edge would so you know you tend it seems like it has a lot of bite plus it cuts like a polished edge in the benefited ways now um, the other day when I was sharpening with the veneer stones, I did that edge completely by accident playing around with the polishes because I never used their stroppy compound before. And I'm going to do a video on that subject on the different edges and stuff and like uh, different finishes on edges. Then also I want to do another video on that stropping compound after I've used it a bunch because it's really, really impressing me. That stropping compound to the point to where I think people are really going to be interested in possibly getting some because you can really keep up with an edge for a long time with it or in between sharpenings to the point to where you know you you get away with not sharpening for a long time with some of that compounds it i mean it's pretty crazy how good that stuff is but that's for another video now with this one, I just used my Veneve Diamond Infused Stones, the CBN Stones, went all the way up to uh, 3-7 micron or whatever it is. It's basically like 3600 grit or something like that, and then I just dropped it regular. So I didn't try to do anything special, but the edge did come out good. Now... The grind on this is pretty similar to the XM18, which it's supposed to be. The XM18 is about 160, it's 165 thousandths on the spine. Now, this is a hinder design, so it makes sense. And it's supposed to be like the slicer grind uh, video I did, the XM18 slicer. It's supposed to be like basically that knife, just a ZT um, collab with hinder. Now, this one is 160,000, so it's 5,000 thinner on the spine than it is on the XM18, the regular one. So, and behind the edge thickness is very similar. There are a little over 20,000, like 22, 23,000 behind the edge. So, they're going to cut pretty similar. This one might cut a little bit better because of the way the grind is, how it's much higher, and being 5,000 thinner behind the spine or on the spine so this is going to cut a little bit better than the hinder but not by much now i do wish be, even though this is a a really strong built knife and you know what most people would consider a little bit harder use and when i say harder use what i'm trying to say is like would you rather go cut ru rubber hosing you know thick rubber hosing with this knife or this knife of course this knife because this knife even though it's very thin and the blade will go through the material very nicely you're not going to get no leverage in your hand so it's going to suck because it's going to hurt your hand trying to push through hard rubber hosing now with this yeah it's a little thicker behind the edge but you can get leverage behind it. you can get a full grip you can put all your weight into it you can saw it so you know, that's what I mean when I say a little bit harder use and, you know, built a little bit tougher. And this thing is built very tough. Look at all the standoffs, the stop pins, 
um, is nice and big. I mean, just everything about it is built very strong. So I understand why this grind is the way it is, but I still think that by thinning it out just a little tiny bit, you would increase cutting performance so much without losing any strength or at least much strength. Like you would have still most of the strength there, except for it would just cut a lot better, which is the majority of what people are doing with this. So I think it would only benefit the knife to be just a little bit thinner in the grind. Now, whatever. Um, it did take a really good edge. It's very sharp. It could be a little bit crispier of an edge, but it's still very, very nice. And, you know, obviously a world better than what it was. And especially with it, the edge a little bit laid back, it's going to cut just a little bit better. I'm speaking about the heat treat a little bit because my ZT0450 had the worst heat treat I've ever seen on S35VM. I'm talking about sharpening this was like sharpening putty. It really sucked. So, uh, but this didn't wasn't like that at all. This uh, sharpened up really nice. But the action though is very... The action is... Very nice. The detent is nice and uh, it's uh, strong, yet not too strong. Uh, the the flipper tab is very similar to the Hinder flipper tab. It pokes up a little bit, but it's not sharp like the Hinder one. So it's a lot more comfortable. You can push button it or light switch it, but it likes a light switch a little bit better in my opinion. Now you can thumb flick off the studs but they're slippery they're very slippery the sound is very nice especially if you tighten the pivot just a little bit it actually increases the detent just a little bit so it's a little snappier the drop isn't as fast but the acoustics are just a little bit nicer also the the thumb studs are a little bit harder to flick but it's not that bad. If they had a little texture on the thumb studs, these things would be so much better. It's just they're slick. It almost doesn't make any sense to me why they didn't just put a little texture right there. Because reverse flicking it doesn't really work. It's just too slick. Um, now the drop on it, it is very smooth. And even when I adjust this and loosen it just a little tiny bit, it's... A very good drop, still nice and centered, and no play. Unlocking it, the uh, other problem I have is it does have a late detent, and you do double clutch a little bit. Double clutching is when you unlock it, and the, and the, the flipper tab hits your thumb, and the detent ball at the same time, and you got to go like that, and either push past it. Or what you can do is you can hit it, and then you put your thumb back up there, go a little lower, unlock it, get past it, and then like that. Now you can, you do adapt, and you learn right where the detent is, so you stop doing that. But it's nice when you can get a knife that you just unlock, no matter where your finger lies, even if it's up high, it's still past the detent. That's very nice when you can have that, when you don't have any of that double clutch. So I would like to see the detent ball just up a little bit higher, but not that big of a deal. Um, it's still very nice, and the action is amazing. The ergos are just perfect. Um, exactly how I like to see ergos. It's kind of like a straight back design the way I like ergos. Um, and the finger placement really doesn't force you. Like if I go over the tops of these peaks, it doesn't bother me at all. But the ergos are so nice, even in reverse grip. Um, very obviously it's very similar to the xm18 which has amazing ergos even this clip sits right in a good fatty part of my fit my hand where it doesn't bother me at all it feels very comfortable i can tell i can get a lot of leverage behind this knife jipping does work so you can also put your thumb on there for slicing cuts now the tip is pretty thick so it's not pretty thick it's um it's relatively decent it's not an acute tip but, you know, you can definitely use the tip. Now, you're going to have to lift up high to get to the tip because you're mostly hitting belly all the way to about right there. So, you know, to, to use the tip, you have to, you know, raise your arm up where your wrist to use it. Otherwise, you're getting belly. So, 
I do like to be able to use my tip for utility cuts, but not all blade shapes are going to be, you know, the same. And so I love the blade shape. Blade shape is a great, very useful blade shape. Now, the sharpening choil, I do not like. I, I just wish... Now, it's fine. You're going to get a lot of life out of it. You're going to be able to sharpen it up many times, or not many times, a few more times. As long as you use the same angle, you'll be able to just basically sharpen right over this edge. And you'll probably get two more sharpenings out of it before it really starts getting into there and starts creating, you know, tr trouble in the sharpening choil. But that's only if it doesn't get any nicks. If you do chip the edge or nick the edge, you're going to, it's probably going to need you to put a new sharpening choil in or just sharpen into it. It's just is what it is. Now they could have just put a bigger sharpening choil or a deeper sharpening choil, but you can also do that yourself because the stop pins up here, which lands right there. So there's nothing stopping you from putting in your own sharpening choil. And I don't even mean a finger choil. I just mean a good sharpening choil. This one's just not that deep and it really doesn't give you much room to to play around with before it's gone you know you see the plunge grind the plunge grind is right here literally right where the edge is you can see where it's like shiny right there so i would have liked to have seen a little bit bigger sharpening choil um other than that man i see me double clutching there see i love this knife man i really do i love how strong it's built it does have weight relief on this side of the scale and not the other one feels great in the hand feels like a, a heavy duty knife and it feels like a tool and it also feels like an expensive tool and i like that i like the feeling of a tool where it actually feels like it's quality it feels like it's built strong it feels like it's built tough so I like this knife a lot. It's a knife that's right up my alley of knives. And I know it does have a big reputation. A lot of people love them. $280 for this one. You can get the ones with the carbon fiber scale for $260. And you can get new scales like my car to scales and stuff like that for $65. Bucks. So it's not cheap. Not cheap at all. But it's a lot cheaper than a hinder. Um, and it's very close to a hinder. So you're basically getting a hinder by buying one of these. Um, and it's done very, very well. Very similar. This is the lock bar stabilizer. It basically stops you from unspringing the lock when you push it over. Another thing, I love the size of the lock bar insert. The steel lock bar insert is really big. And beefy. Everything's big and beefy on this, which I like. Um, but not in a way to where it's ridiculous. It's big and beefy and strong in a way to where you just feel like you have a tool in your hand. I love that. If you feel like you're prepared and ready for anything. Um, now, like I said, the performance and cutting isn't going to be the best. It's definitely not going to cut as good as a lot of knives. But it's also going to give you more leverage and be a little stronger than a lot of knives. So, you know. Um, but yeah, man. Oh, one of these with either a hollow grind or just a little bit thinned out grind. Just a little bit thinner. Man, this thing. Even just the way it is, this thing is amazing. I would love to have one of these. And I... And, I'm glad I got to have one on the channel um, and, you know, got to sharpen one up because I've been wanting to check one of these things out for a long, long time. So I'm very happy I got to check one out and I'm as impressed as I thought I would be. So it's definitely exactly what I thought it would be. And <sighs> I've always wanted one. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.